Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to the next episode of Django by Example. In this episode, we're going to learn how to use the Django shell to play around with our models and our database. And we're going to take a look at how to actually um, create new items, modify existing items, and save and load from the database. It's pretty simple. So uh, we're actually going to be using manage.py for this. Again, manage.py just provides a bunch of functions that let you interface with your Django website. Now, PyCharm is really nice because if you go to tools and run manage.py task, it will actually bring up this um, window right here where you can run a specific manage.py task. And if you hit control space, it will show you all of the possible, um, you know, things that you can run. Now for this we're going to just want to run shell. And this is the exact same thing as doing uh, manage dot Django, uh, sorry, this is the exact same thing as doing python manage.py shell. Um, and then this shell basically just loads a regular old python shell but it includes inside of it, um, it basically automatically imports Django and your specific app and all of that stuff. So it does a lot of the work for you. Now, actually, I jumped the gun a little bit. Before we get to the Django console, we need to do one thing in manage.py. Or actually, two things. We need to call first make migrations, and then we need to call migrate. So make my so essentially, I should say a migration is a basically a definition of something that you've changed in your models. And the migrations are used uh, by Django to set up the database. So as you can see, this creates one migration that says create model item. You can actually take a look at the migration, although you'll never really want to look at this um, and certainly don't change anything. But as you can see, in this particular migration, we're trying to create a new model called item. And uh, these are all of the fields that will go inside of that particular uh, model item. Again, Django handles all of this automatically for you, uh, so you don't need to worry about it. But essentially, every time you change something about a model, whether you delete a model, you add a new model, or you change one of the fields inside of a model, you need to call make migrations again. And that will generate a new migration file that describes the changes between uh, you know, the old version of your models and the new version. The last thing you need to call is migrate. That will actually run all of the migration files that you have. You'll notice that there's a bunch of things that happen. These are all built-in Django things. The important thing here is you can see it applies the migration from our pdb underscore app and it says okay, so it worked. Now that that has happened, the database has been set up with all of the models that we need, including that item model. So we are now ready to go to the shell. Okay, so here is our shell and we can start working. The first thing that we need to do is we need to say from models import user. I'm um, sorry, from pdb app.models import, not user, I'm sorry, item. I'm getting a little bit confused. So essentially uh, we have pdb app right here and then we have our file models.py and from that file, from that module, we wanna import the item class. Okay, so we can now successfully reference item. If you forget to do this and you try to reference the item class, it won't work because it doesn't know what you're talking about. Once you have it imported, we can actually start working with it. So let's go ahead and create an item. And I'm actually going to uh, bring this up and make this bigger because this is our main focus right now. Okay, so uh, now what we wanna go ahead and do is create a new item. We don't want to use the item constructor uh, because it's not really how you're supposed to do it in Django. So what we're going to do, we're going to create an item that represents Java. It's going to contain the information about Java. So we're going to create a variable called Java and we're going to say it's equal to, and you're going to say item.objects.create. So item has a field called objects. Actually, every model automatically has a field called objects. And then it has a method called create where we pass it the information that we need to give it, and it will create a new item for us. So the information would be name, which is Java, and description. So we'll just say a programming language 
uh, current uh, version is Java 8. And we'll hit enter. So that will create a new item for us. It will not save it into the database. So this is not saved yet. And if I close out of the console, I'll lose that item. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. If I go ahead and print Java, you'll see it says the type is item. And then it calls that str function that we wrote. So it says Java there. Um, and of course, if I call str Java, it would just say the name, which is Java. Now, from here, if I want to get specific information, I can just say java.name uh, like that, and it'll tell me Java. I can say java.description. I don't know why it suggests it with the parentheses, but you don't want to actually call it. You just say java.description, and it'll tell you a programming language current version is Java 8. So you access all of the data directly. You have an instance of item. You just call you know, .name or .description or whatever it might be. And finally, if we want to actually put this in our database, we just call the save method. So java.save, and that's it. So Java is now saved in our database. And it's automatically assigned the ID 1, because uh, it's the first item, and ID numbers start at 1. So that's how to create a new item and put it in the database. Let's take a look at how to get an item out of the database. Let me see if I can clear this. No, I guess not. Um, so, all right. Just imagine that uh, we're later on. Imagine that the variable Java doesn't exist anymore. In fact, can I get rid of it? Yeah, okay. So now Java doesn't exist anymore, uh, that variable at least. So let's say that we want to actually get that information out of the database. So what we'll do is we'll say item dot objects again, but instead of creating a new object, we want to get one that already exists. So we're just going to call get. And inside of get, you give it basically a piece of information. So for example, I could say that the ID number is equal to one, or I could say that the name is equal to Java or description, whatever I want to do. Now note that there are various ways to filter your data, and we're going to get to that later on. Um, but essentially here, I'm just saying I want to get the item whose ID is equal to 1. And so if I run that and I print Java, you'll see it tells me item Java, which is exactly what we had up here. So I was able to successfully get that from the database. Likewise, I could have said item.objects.get name equals Java. And if I hit enter, um, it returned two items. So I guess... Um, the name Java was saved in there twice, which was my bad. So you shouldn't actually get an error like that. Um, but let's actually let's take a look at that. If I go ahead and do item.objects.all, then it will give me a query set. And a query set is a basically sort of like a list. And you can see that there are two items called Java. I think I got two of them because I was um, testing something earlier and I must have put two of them into the database by accident, but you should only see one of them. Let's say that we want to delete an item. That's essentially the last thing that we want to do. We want to delete an item. Um, so we can basically, first let's get Java, item.objects.get. I'm going to specify ID equals two because I want to get rid of this duplicate that I made by accident. You guys should only have one, so you just want to say ID equals one. Uh, once we have that selected, you just simply call the delete method, and it will be gone. So if I now call item.objects.all again, it will only have one item in there. So that's sort of how to work with items. You can see this line is where we create an item by calling the create method. We can directly access all of the data from it. And once we create it, we, of course, need to save it in the database, just like that. Uh, if we want to get specific data, we can use the get method. And we just specify some sort of data, and it will give us that corresponding object. So for example, I want the item where the ID is equal to 1. And that was Java. So it will give me back Java. And from there, I could call delete on it to remove it from the database. And I can also call item.objects.all, which will give me a query set, basically like a list of all of the items in the database.
Now this is pretty complicated to deal with this and if we want to be able to store you know a bunch of different pieces of data do we really want to write a bunch of Python code that will import it and you know implement all of this data into our site? Not really and so Django thought of that as it thinks of most things and it actually provides an interface, a web interface that we can use to easily uh, add, edit, and delete data. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to use the admin site to uh, create a, uh, to basically manage all of our items. It's going to be super simple, and it's going to be a lot nicer than this, but it's important to know how to do this because in our views, uh, when we need to get information about specific objects, um, then we're going to need to use something like that. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and continue on for more Django. Bye for now.